Camera is rolling, microphone is speeding. Let's get into it. Uh, this video is gonna be very off the cuff. Um, so fair warning, I normally, most of my videos over the last few weeks have been off the cuff, but this one's gonna be very off the cuff because this is an idea that just came to my mind and I thought I'd you know, talk to you about it in a bit of a podcast format. But I had this idea that I've been thinking about for a while now and it came up in a conversation with a student of mine during Time to Build. I might splice in a little bit of a, a thing here to, to talk about this, but he kind of asked around, he kind of asked the question of my philosophy around sustainability because there is a big focus in my program or I, I try to make a big focus for my students to talk about sustainability as maybe the single most important aspect of your business because longevity in my opinion endurance is basically the only predictor of success that has any considerable predictability <laughs> nothing else i've ever seen talent skill ability work ethic none of those things in the people i've known the hundreds of people i've known over the last eight years none of those things have had any impact on the people that become or don't become successful. I've witnessed incredibly talented people do this for a year to achieve incredible results and then just disappear. I've also witnessed not so talented people that don't even work that hard, but are just persistent and do not stop achieve incredible success. And they're still doing this to, to this day because they just refused to stop. And he asked me this question, because I make it a big point all throughout the, the program, Time to Build. I make it a massive point to continuously touch on the idea of longevity and sustainability in everything you do, in the business you run, the content you make, the, the team you hire, the lifestyle you create through your business. I speak about it a lot. And the reason why I do that is because I feel like I've got a little bit of an unfair advantage or a big unfair advantage when it comes to entrepreneurship because... I'm fiercely protective of my time. I'm incredibly passionate about both my business, but then also everything that surrounds my business. And I think that's a mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs often make is they're so fixated on the needle moving activities, the, the things that actually move the needle, action, output, the amount of hours you put into a day, so many entrepreneurs are so focused on that without considering the invisible things, the things that you do outside of your work that may then have an impact on your ability to do the work in the first place. And I know this is kind of a an unsexy thing to talk about. A lot of people probably prefer to talk about you know, how many hours you're working, how hard you're grinding, how much effort you're putting into everything you do. But ironically, it's all the hours outside of your work that may actually create the ability for you to work at your highest possible potential or with the most effectiveness that you can bring to your work if you just focus on those things. I have this story um, that I kind of wanted to make the backbone of this, um, but, but I learned this from being an athlete, essentially. Uh, back when I was sort of, I am training at the moment, I'm going to be racing pretty soon. Uh, the bike I've got in the background is a brand new Speed Max, which I'm, I'm really excited to race on. Uh, but I've raced Ironman triathlons. I've raced multiple 70.3s. I've raced one full Ironman. And the one full Ironman that I did race was quite a serious venture. Uh, I was really hunting for a 9.15. Um, I ended up with a 9.35, which I'm not mad about, but I was really, really hunting for that 9.15 and a Kona spot. And one of the things in the lead up to that event is that just because of my work life, because, you know, during the week, you don't have infinite hours to train. I realized that a good chunk of my training was going to have to happen on the weekends. That was always my process. I would, you know, have a, a five to six hour bike ride on the Saturday, followed by, you know, an hour to an hour and a half run straight off the bike. And then I would usually have either an endurance swim or an endurance run uh, somewhere between an hour and a half in the pool or two to two and a half hours running on the Sunday, uh, which means that I was training anywhere between, you know, eight and 10 hours on the weekend to make up the time that I wanted to make up. And I knew this and, and I found over the process of training for two years, considerably like f considerably focused for two years, I began to notice some of the rhythms of how the tail end of my week went and then how that impacted my ability to train over the weekend. 
And so I started to create a bit of a routine. I started to acknowledge that and go, okay, well, I need to perform my best on the Saturday and then do enough that I'm able to back it up on the, this, not only in the run straight off the bike, but in the Sunday. And so I started to create a, a Friday routine where each Friday I would meticulously plan out my evening to put me in the best or the most optimum performance state to perform the next day. That would be cooking up the biggest pot of pasta you've ever seen in your entire life. I would put on a movie, I would drink multiple liters of water with electrolytes to make sure I was fueled up for the next day. And then I would spend the entire movie, I would clear the couches and everything to make sure I had room. And I would spend the movie foam rolling, stretching, recovering, doing all of that that I could and I would do this every single Friday it became a a ritual for me and something I actually quite enjoyed towards the end of my training is you know I would really begin to look forward to that pot of pasta because I felt like if I finished it or the recovery or the stretching or the movie or every part of that process I began to really enjoy that because I knew I was setting myself up for success the next day And so that mindset of having that process, even little things like (laughs) it was so funny during that time where I knew if I had an afternoon run, well, I probably can't have a heavy protein meal for lunch because that's still going to be sitting in my gut by the time I run, which if any of you are runners, you know, (laughs) if you have a heavy protein meal and then you go for a long run in the afternoon, you might end up with what runners call bubble guts, which isn't the most fun experience in the world. But I knew all of these things and that created a rhythm for how everything I was doing outside of my training had a tremendous impact on my ability to train. And as a result, that either allowed me to have a needle moving session or a session that was just phoning it in. And sometimes even if I did this really badly, let's say I have a big day, long day on my feet and I've got an afternoon run, sometimes those sessions would either be cut short or eliminated entirely. And that has an impact on your ability to not only perform on race day, but just perform consistently over time. It impacts the injuries you get, the the process of just recovering in general. All of it has an impact and mostly it comes from the things you do outside of your training, not what you're doing in your training that has an impact on all of that. And so I brought this mindset when I did transition into focusing on growing my business two years ago after I raced um, for what I thought at the time was going to be the last time. But when I transitioned back into my work and focused on entrepreneurship, I brought that mindset into my work. I really began to focus on optimum performance states, the things that put me in the best and most effective position to perform when I'm performing. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs are so fixated on the needle moving activities. They're so fixated on output that they completely neglect all of the things that they're doing outside of their work that help them perform their best. You know, a lot of, if you, if you were to take an entire day and you know, the, the classic thing is entrepreneurs will brag about working 12 hours a day, but let's say you cut that day into four, three, four hour intervals. And let's say that first four hour interval, you're a 10 out of 10 effective. You wake up, you have a coffee, you sit down at your desk and you work for four hours and you're a 10 out of 10 effective. Then that second four hours, maybe it's after lunch, you're let's say a six out of 10 effective. If you're a morning person like me, I my brain starts to switch off at 1 p.m. <laughs> By 3 p.m. I'm completely done and any work that happens after that is basically a waste of time. But let's say that second four hour interval, you're a five or a six out of 10 in terms of your effectiveness. And then let's say after dinner, you sit back down and you have another four hours because you need to hustle and grind. But what you don't realize or what you probably do realize but refuse to acknowledge is during that third four hour interval to achieve that 12 hour workday, you're actually a one out of 10 or a 0.5 out of 10 in terms of effectiveness. And you would be so much better suited the next day in those first four hours and maybe even the second four hours if you just eliminated that third interval and focused on recovery, hung out with your family, went for a nice dinner, went to the gym, worked out, ate better, recovered, all of the things that help you show up the next day in a better mind state, a better physical state, a better emotional state to do your best the next day. And that might mean that that first four hour interval is still a 10 out of 10, but that second four hours is now an eight out of 10. And then you can stop again and again and again 
and again. And before you know it, you've got a really rock solid work day that is short enough that you're not having it dominate your entire life, but long enough that you can get what you need to get done, done. So I make this video, or I, I'm, I guess I'm ranting in this video to kind of give you, or at least make you think about how all of the things outside of your work are having more of an impact on your ability to work than you might have acknowledged before. You know, what are the things that you could do to prepare yourself best to film videos? For example, with me, I know that I need a warm up period before I can get on camera like this and talk. And so, you know, right before I film this video, I turn the camera on and I just talk to the camera. Those videos get deleted immediately. Don't worry, those are never going to surface. But I spend 20, sometimes even 30 minutes listening to music, talking to the camera, talking to the microphone, just getting in the rhythm of doing that. And that process puts me in a state to perform. That's not something that is a needle moving activity. If anything, it's a complete waste of fucking time in terms of what most entrepreneurs would consider as effective. But for me, it puts me in a state to perform my best. The same thing with getting enough sleep, exercising every day. Fuck me, I spend 14 hours a week training for Ironmans, which again, by all intents and purposes is a complete waste of time if all I was focused on is how effective my business is, but it puts me in the mind state to be able to make content like this, to be able to perform. I've always had this idea that when my, when my discipline drops in every other area of my life, when I'm not eating well, when I'm not sleeping well, when I'm not training consistently, hilariously, or not hilariously, but obviously, it reduces my ability to get on camera and give my opinion because I don't feel like I deserve the ability to give my opinion. So by doing all of those things outside of the needle moving activities, I'm actually so much more effective when I do sit here and do this. So have a think about that. Have a think about what you could do or what you might replace the grind hours with, you know, those hours between six and 10 hours of work in a single day. Could you eliminate those four hours and go for a walk? Go to the gym, cook a meal, hang out with your, your girlfriend, your husband, your boyfriend, your, your wife, your kids, your dog. <laughs> Could you do something else that puts you in a state to perform better the next day? And if you can do that consistently, will that help you avoid burnout? Will that help you be more effective? Will that help you make better decisions? Will that help you be a better business owner? All of that over a 12 month period, a 24 month period, a 36 month period, a five year, 10 year, 15 year period. How much more effective are you gonna be if you just slow down, do the extra things, the invisible things, the, the things that no one's gonna pat you on the back for. No one's gonna pat you on the back for getting an extra two hours of sleep a night. No one's gonna pat you on the back for eating healthy. No one's gonna pat you on the back for going to the gym in the morning. No one's gonna pat you on the back for going for a fucking walk but they are going to pat you on the back for how effective you are with those things in place. So I hope this video helps and I'll see you in the next one.